Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing? JC here with the Cuban Redneck DIY channel. I want to thank you for visiting. And I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but you know the drill. Please subscribe. It is free and it helps me uh, to achieve monetization. That would also uh, allow me, or that will pay, uh, to buy equipment and to buy extra things and not only review them, hack them, destroy them, test them, do whatever we do to them. So, Last week, or a few weeks back, I should say, we started setting up our garage workspace uh, by modifying, assembling and modifying four hopper frame workbenches. Check out that video. Uh, the second step was supposed to be lighting. We definitely need some lighting in this garage, uh, but as you can tell, I'm a little hot and sweaty, and that is because it is 95 degrees outside with a uh, heat index of like 105, I don't know. I don't even want to know what the humidity is either. So. Anyway, um, I decided to address the heat issue uh, before moving forward. Uh, you see, as part of the lighting, uh, the planning for the lighting system was to create an access point here. The nearest access point in the house is about 60 feet behind me. Uh, it is not very easy to get into. Um, and. Needless to say, this house is the true definition of a crawling space. You're not standing up in that attic, you've got to crawl it. So going back and forth 60 feet was not really ideal. I decided to uh, implement a second access point. Uh, being as smart ass as I normally normally are, uh, I decided to come to the garage, figure out where I wanted my access point and go and make a hole. Guess what? Both the electrician and the plumber also decided or found out that that was the easiest way to run wiring and plumbing. So at the end of the day, I ended up shifting the access point to one side, which it worked out okay because when you get into it, into the attic, you're actually walking or you're crawling into the highest, you know, the highest space. So that worked out okay. Uh, however, uh, over the last few days, I've been, you know, just standing by the toolbox. I feel from this little whole mishap that I made up there, the heat that is coming down from there is unbearable. Um, I was going to put drywall on it, but I decided to do something better. And that is to kill two birds with one stone. Number one, I'm going to cool off the garage. Number two, I'm going to cool off the attic. And hopefully I save some money in electricity by having the AC not work so hard. So number one, it is we're going to uh, take multiple uh, low voltage, low wattage, high volume fans, plug them up to a solar panel and during the day those fans are going to take all the heat near the ceiling because heat rises, don't forget, so it's going to take all the heat and pump it into the attic. Now, nevertheless, the, regardless of how hot it is in here, it is much hotter in the attic. So by bringing in cooler air uh, on the pressure will help bring the temperature in the attic down. That improves that, uh, the longevity of your roof and it makes the AC a lot more efficient. On top of that, we're gonna do a second project. I don't know, I don't want this video to be one of my 50 minute you know, things, but if we get enough time, and maybe I just roll it into a different video, I wanna build a, what is called an evaporation air cooling system. Basically, it's, a, it's an AC for the cheap guy, you know? Uh, it's going to work in the same way when a power with solar panels and uh, there's going to be no cost of electricity and I don't intend to spend more than $100 on both things. So overall, I think it would be a really good thing to implement. It's something really expensive that anybody can do and implement and uh, I hope you find it interesting. Uh, yeah, for those of you who are ready, you know, with the smart remarks, it would have been easier just to put an AC on the wall or, you know, split unit or something. Uh, from an electrical point of view, I cannot afford that. I have a 15 amp run to the garage and I would like to run my saw, my different, my compressor and stuff without tripping uh, the breaker when the AC is running. So for that reason it is that I'm taking this hack, but I don't know. I, I don't even know if this is going to work. So bear with me and uh, let's get cracking. I'm going to try to make it simple and easy and not cheap. So let's get built. If you ask me, I'll be the first one to tell you that this is a little bit of an overbuild. That is because a simple board with four round holes will more than suffice for this application. 
Nevertheless, that is not me and instead of choosing the easy way out, I decided to make a full frame with an outer ring that would allow me to sandwich the bracket onto the drywall ceiling. Also know that although I was not too confident in the intro, this is really not an experiment. There are systems in the market that cost thousands of dollars that do exactly the same thing. Here is an example of one sold at Home Depot. And just an FYI, one of the easiest ways to cool down a room, a house, or in this case a garage workspace without an AC, is to extract or remove the hot air within, not to bring air in as we often see people do. That is because regardless of the ambient temperature outside, if you do not allow hot air to concentrate into a room, it will be and feel much cooler than the outside temperature. With my sketch of design on hand, I went straight to the miter saw and started cutting some 1x3 as well as some 1x2 white pine. As I said before, this is nothing fancy and it doesn't have to be expensive. And as you can see, this is really nothing more than a box. It has an inner lip that holds the fan and an external one that serves as a surface area where the compression ring will screw onto. As I started to sand, I realized that the edge for both the inlet and the exhaust was a little bit too sharp. So I decided to run a half inch round over bed to smooth them out. Okay, so with both the fan housing and the outer ring complete, it is time to figure out how am I going to mount these fans into place. After dry fitting one of the fans into place, I knew exactly what I needed. And that is one of the extra galvanized plates I have purchased to modify the Harbor Freight workbench. So after taking a few measurements, I went ahead and cut it into small triangles where the fans will be bolted on and then secure to the fan housing. That worked out pretty well, so with all the pieces ready to assemble, I decided to give everybody a nice coat of Rostolium X2 white just to give it a clean look. After making sure that all the pieces were dry, I guess the next thing we need to do is to um, make a dry fit. But before we go there, I need to open the hole up in the ceiling. Right now it's about an 8x8 and I need to make it big enough to hold this fan shroud. To make the opening, I just measure uh, from the wall, try to get the hole as square as possible and use my multi-tool to open it up. After being satisfied with the fit, I went ahead and uh, dropped it into place and I also tested the outer ring which will serve as uh, the clamping mechanism to hold this structure into place. Okay, so with this part pretty much complete, all we need to do is install our fans, wire them up, and uh, get this thing running. Um, the installation of the fans is pretty straightforward. Since the fans are one inch thick, I use uh, one and a half by 832 screws, and I use nylon washers, because I don't want these things backing up. Uh, another thing is I'm a little bit anal about vibrations and rattlings and things of that nature so I took the extra time to uh, cut or make some uh, rubber washers I guess you can call it. I made it from an anti-slip uh, foam, a uh, piece of anti-slip foam that I had laying around and uh, all I did is uh, use a center punch and uh, make you know some little donuts 
this will uh, get sandwiched uh, both the top and the bottom between the metal parts and the fan and will hopefully uh, keep the fan from rattling. All right, so uh, with all the fans plugged in and wired, uh, it is we are ready for installation. However, I do want to make one last modification, and that is to have some kind of screen or filter uh, to keep mosquitoes and flies and bees from going up into the attic. So I decided to make this really simple uh, screen uh, with some leftover, uh, I guess you can call it pool screen or patio screen, and I made a little frame for it and uh, hopefully this will keep the little buggers away and won't interfere too much with airflow. So um, with that done, it's uh, straight out to installation. It, you already saw me do, do this once and with all the wiring in place, it is just a matter of dropping it in place and bolting it on. So when I first started this project, I had a lot of questions. Is it worth it? Is it gonna work? You know, can you actually cool down a room without an AC? Well, I have to tell you that the, the room, the garage is not AC cold, but it's substantially cooler when the fans are on than when the fans are not running. Uh, with that said, if I had to do anything over, I will probably step it up on the size of fans. Right now, I'm at about 370 CFM, but I think about 1000 CFM will be a much, much better performance. As far as electricity consumption, it's doing what uh, everybody claims, what all the, you know, what the Home Depot website and the other WhatsApps claim, is that the AC uh, will become a lot more efficient. I actually can hear it uh, coming on less times during, uh, during the hour. Right now, I've only had it on for a few days, but uh, as you can see, my uh, electricity consumption has actually gone down, although the temperature is still holding up in the mid-90s. So the next step will be to get our cooling system up and running. And uh, I really hope that we can improve on these numbers. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Thank you.